Okay, so continuing our talk on nerves and curves, doing this little task here, a uh, little project I like to do, kind of showing the finer, some of the finer stuff you can do basically with extruding, extruding the curves. Um, we've messed around with a revolve tool, so we kind of know, you know, if you lay a revolve tool in there and create something. You can create these bowl-like um, figures and stuff like that. But what if you wanted to create like extensions off that? Um, so you want to create horns on a helmet or like a hose, or in some cases like characters' arms and stuff like that. And instead of having to basically come in here and take a box, and we'll get into extruding like just keep extruding out trying to get that curve right you know it's just sometimes it you can do it but then most of the time it's just takes forever to try to get you know the, the look you want you really want to so um, what you can do is basically trace a curve and give it the shape that you assign it like say a square or a circle and extrude along that path in other words so say if I have a curve here and I'm going to create it on the front on the side well, let's do the front so I have a curve and I say if I want this the shape of my hose or my horn or whatnot uh, you can create a circle down here it just drops a regular size circle and you can scale these things however you want to just know that whatever your scale is is going to be the size that that circle will start out as and it's what it's going to do is it's going to extrude along this path that you can manipulate with the control vertexes so basically if you were to select your circle notice that the path has started right in the middle of the circle and you should select and selected the path you can go up to extrude up here on the box you can kind of see what's going on uh, to that path uh, the scale we'll get into that we don't want to scale it right now I want to keep it the same shape um, and you just want to create nerves you apply that so basically it created this shape of the circle extruded along the path now if you go into wireframe mode and you look at your vertex of your or actually path you can actually change the the shape of it so you can kind of manipulate it kind of like you did with the bowls if you're able to uh, use the revolve tool and then you can actually take this and convert it to polygons and do even more with it so so what we're going to do today is a little task I like to do to kind of embody that plus then we can kind of talk about um, combining objects together um, yeah let's just get started I've started a made a folder and I just called a teapot and what we're gonna do is make a teapot with one two three four different parts and kind of park them all together so I'm going to go into create free image plane attribute editor I have dropped a reference image of a teapot. It's not exactly a side view, but it's enough to get us there. And I'm going to add that to my image plane. It's nice. Image plane that I'm going to drop back there. I'm going to go back in, create a layer from selected. All that layer reference and I'm just gonna lock it down so I can't select it actually let me select it and kind of turn it down some because really I just need to trace the outline of it And I'll be tracing everything from the front. 
probably should move it down so we're on the ground plane. You notice it's not all like that, which is fine because I'm going to actually just kind of cover my lines and just trace this bowl. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trace like I would with the vase. Then I'm going to revolve this bowl part out here. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the lid. And then for my handle and my spout, I'm going to use that method of extruding the pass. Oh. Okay, let me get started here. Just got my curve tool. Being kind of rough here with it. I'm not really worried about the inside because you're not going to be able to see it. Texas and I'm going to scale these both out to zero or till they're even in other words nope. and kind of move some of these right here a little bit just to make my shape look a little nicer I'm not worried about my inside. So if you look at this from perspective view, you have this object. Now if we go up here to revolve, that well, turned out pretty nice. That's my bottom part. And the reason why I'm going to make my top separate is because, you know, obviously it's separate. Um, if you were making this from a mold, you would make these... Um, all separate pieces anyway and you would um, burn the mold in there with them or if you would you know sculptured out the um, the handles it would be a separate part anyway but uh, we want the top to be separate anyway because I want to be able to take the top off because you'd be able to take the top off in real life so why not shouldn't your model you don't necessarily have to, but you know, in this scene, I want someone to take the top off of my teapot, so I need to make it separate. So you can either um, right here from you here, you can either create a layer and hide this, or you can just kind of go how it is if you want to. But you got to remember again, I'm going to revolve this around here up there, so I really, really need to create the top of the. The top of the teapot like just like I did with the bowl so I'm going to go to the top up here I'll make it come down on there Perfectly. I don't want to do any kind of cleanup here. This is going to look kind of weird because it would be kind of a flat top at the top there. Like I said, I'm not really following in line with my reference sheet time here, but it is a good starting place. So I'm not doing it by memory because honestly, if I did, you know, who knows what it would turn out like. So I'm just going to test this and see what this looks like. Surfaces evolve. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is good. You notice um, we were talking about this in class, this basically turning out black like this. What that is is the normals need to be reversed on it. So if you, in this case, um, the normals aren't your object looks like this, it's because on the inside of it is the shading and on the outside is there's no normals. So you basically need to reverse the normals on it. So if you have the surfaces, reverse direction. Now you've got a nice little working. And you notice it didn't really close in all the way. And that's fine. That can be addressed when you convert it to polygons. But that's not too bad of a lid looking there. I'm going to keep these objects like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my method of extruding on a path. So I'm going to create some layers here so I can hide these things. We're going to talk about these are our evolved objects. So I'm going to hide them. Okay, so, and you could actually hide these curves too, but I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do to start extruding this handle here, it's important where you start because that's where it's the extruding is going to start. If you notice, it's thicker up here and thinner down here. So that's good because I can actually work with that scale. So I'm going to make it thick up here and I'm going to start up here. You can start down here, but you just need to make sure where you start your path, path at is where the actual extruding is going to start at. So I'm just going to draw like a little not pretty uneven path right there. I'm looking at it from perspective view. Now I'm going to go create a circle. And I'm going to bring it kind of right to where that thing starts at. So I can see the scale of it, in other words. And basically what I'm going to turn it, don't really necessarily need to kind of put it right exactly where it needs to go, but I'm doing this because of the scale. And I'm going to scale it uniformly so I can kind of start it right there. Well, let's see if this works. Probably needs to be adjusted a little bit. My little vertexes are a little weird there. Let's go ahead and extrude this out. Now, the first thing you want to do, you want to extrude what you want extruded. Then you want to extrude your path next. And say if you were to have started your path down here and started your circle up here, it's going to like project maybe starting here going an opposite way. So to keep it right on track is you select your circle at the where you started your path at. So I'm going to my circle, select my path, I'm going to go up here to surfaces, and I'm going to bring up my box so I can look at this. So we want the at path, we want the tube, and I want it to scale down. I want it to scale down by like half. I don't want it the same distance as it is here. And you'll see what I mean whenever I do this. So I'm going to just type in 0.5. You could rotate it if you wanted to. Um, you want it nerves complete. There we go. Don't look too bad and you can go in here and you can select the vertexes of the actual um, surface and kind of move them if you want to like this or if you convert it to wireframe you can actually go in and select your control vertex And just adjust those. Kind of hard though. So say like I want to actually bring it in a little bit higher so it goes into the thing and I want these to kind of go a little out. I want to go in some. If you move that it's going to move the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back out to my, turn my shading back on, and I'm going to select this row here, basically. So 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude, I'm gonna scale these out. Gotta fi fine tune it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with a spout. Get right here, I'm gonna just create a simple Press enter. I'm going to create another NURB a circle. I'm on the front view, so I don't need to see, but you can see it here. You can move it over. Right in the middle, I'm going to scale this one up pretty good. Remember, if you hit the red scale or hit the red axis, you're going to be scaling it up like that right there. So you want to stay uniform when you're working like this. And I think I'm going to work with that. So, but it's going to have to basically go in less than a half to actually look like kind of a, a skinny spout here. So we're going to select there. We're going to select our path. We're going to go back up to extrude. We're going to go to, we're going to scale it down to 0.2, just see where we're at right there. Two at path, apply. Eh, it's not bad, we can work with it. So you see it's offset a little bit, which is fine. Just have to, I think I'm going to use these control vertexes and get it where I want to be at now. So I'm going to select this whole, and you can go in here to isoparm and start messing around with that. I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it simple. It's really doing a lot there whenever you're doing that. Um, selecting certain sections. Shift select these. Notice I'm on the front view, so I'm selecting everything around it. Oops, see, I don't have that one selected. Okay, now we can rotate a little bit. And I'm going to scale it up just a tad. Now I'm going to adjust these up here. Scale it out a little bit so it kind of gives a little bit of Looking at the top view, you can actually kind of, if you wanted to get it exactly right, you can select these certain ones, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it like it is because I like that heavy spout. Because I'll show you what we're going to do whenever we actually give it thickness and make it look like a spout. Whereas right now it just looks like a dead tube. So if you notice, if I turn my teapot back on over here, I've got all my parts here. Looking pretty good. Now the first thing I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and talk about go ahead and converting this because I want to be able to give this some sort of depth so it doesn't look sharp in other words. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these to my um, these two items to my layer I have over here. Select. Or I'll just create a new layer for them. These are my paths tools. But the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to erase them right yet. I want to be able to hide them. Because what I'm going to do is I want to convert all of these things. If you notice, you got all your reserve, revolve surfaces, curve, revolve surfaces, curve. So I'm going to select all four of these things. 
They all look pretty good. I don't need to adjust them anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and convert them to polygon so I can kind of go ahead and get them into separate objects that can eventually, eventually be combined together. So I'm going to go to modify nerves to polygons. And we did this with the vase. Go to your box up here. You want to make sure you're on quads. That's going to be a big one. A lot of you will probably forget and keep it at triangles, quads, and you can control the count of it. Um, I'm going to keep it small. Uh, let me go 600. Uh, apply. So what that did, it made everything kind of look weird. That's because it's these objects on top of the other objects. So if I were to turn off the, the uh, curve surfaces, then you would see now you're just seeing straight polygon geometry here. You know what? That's probably too many quads because it multiplied 600 for each object. So I'm going to undo. And just go back and do each separate one. About 400. Yep. Yeah, that's a little easier. Okay, so I'm going to turn these off again, which I do. I have them turned off. I don't necessarily need the surfaces and the paths anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these objects here and create delete history. And what that does basically it makes them their own object to where the curves and the actual surfaces can't they're not affected by those instances anymore. So in all honesty, I can erase all this stuff, which I'm going to go ahead and delete the curves on there because you can move this stuff if you wanted to. I don't need these anymore. These are not, I mean, you can save them if you want to go back and kind of redo and put them in layers, but I'm not going to, so I'm going to delete them. I'm going to bring my teapot down here. And it's not looking too bad. I mean, the only thing is where maybe, you know, you've got these crinkles going around here, but that, you know, if you were to start smoothing stuff around, you can see how things are connected. The same way my reference image is. My reference image, if you notice, um, the actual teapot, you can see the places. I don't know why these pictures aren't coming up for some reason on my graphics card. It's really weird. Um, but they're not actually connected. Or they're, in this instance, they're not, they look like they've been burned together, which looks pretty fine, you know, looking at it from here. If I were to texture this, I would just kind of run all the colors the same. So I'm going to take them off smooth. But the only thing I'm going to do is I want to give this some thickness right here. So I'm going to go to edge mode. Now that it's a piece of geometry or a polygon, I can go and manipulate it with the edge or the face of the vertex mode. So I'm going to go to edge mode and I'm going to select one of the edges and I'm going to select the next one, hold shift and click twice and lo and behold, it's ring selected that entire ring. So I'm going to go to my tools, which I like to use these up here and just extrude. So that didn't really do nothing. It doesn't show any of this boxing up here. You could actually pull this thing out here and you've got all these divisions, which we don't want that because it's set on 21 divisions. So we only want no divisions or one division. And I don't want to pull it out. I want to actually scale them in. So I'm going to hit the scale tool over here. I'm just going to scale these uniformly, but just a tad. 
So that gives us the depth on that. Now I'm going to extrude it again. And I'm just going to start pulling it down. These things are set up weird. And you can extrude again if you need to. I, I know what it is. And you can scale. Because you would never really see this unless you were, you know, had your camera right on there. Now if you were to actually smooth around, you just got this nice little pore spout. You can take and keep tucking that thing down there. Or another option, which probably maybe may work. I really wouldn't suggest doing it quite yet, though, but you can actually select this entire thing here. All the faces and extrude. And now you're dealing with this, though. So pretty hard method, but if, you, you know, in certain cases, like if you're making walls or something, you can kind of get it right instead of kind of tucking something in there like you would create a mouth basically that's how you would create the mouth and you would just start tucking the uh, lips inside and then make a mouth basically or you could kind of extrude the entire thing which that doesn't really work all the time so i'm going to back up and do it the other way go to my extrude here and figure out why it's Set it up more. There it is. And the more you keep extruding, the easier it gets to Kind of start hiding it back in here. There we go. Back to object mode. And you can kind of bevel these out if you want to. Same way with the face. You select, then you shift select the next one. But if you were to bevel this, I guess it's a nice little and before you actually extrude it I guess I should have showed you if you wanted to kind of adjust it I would go to your side and you can kind of move these vertexes around a little bit actually let me back it up Select your edge. You select these rings here. Kind of the way I was talking about building a torso for a character. You could adjust your vertexes like that. Kind of turn them how you want to. So the next thing you want to kind of think about um, doing, once you get it like how you want to, some thickness right there, is we want to pair this stuff together. And there's different methods of uh, getting geometry paired. It's called a parent-child hierarchy. That's what I enjoy using. Uh, you can group them all together. I don't really do that a lot because it's just... It's just grouping them. Um, you can combine them to where like you could, like right now this is its own separate. And if you're, before the same thing, if you want to make these objects for the center point, because we'll actually need to be able to kind of turn this thing down. Um, 
modify center like you want to be able to lift this lid up somehow in other words like if we we're going to um, parent child hierarchy these things together you'd have one thing follow another thing in a pathway kind of breaking it down over here in the F the outline or in other words if we wanted to combine these objects together and make them one object then we could in other words if you wanted to combine this handle here oops, let me, actually let me make another video I will continue this video on the next one so I'm talking about our parent child hierarchy level so okay so that's kind of the making the teapot with the surface and the curves converting into polygons it's getting those shapes basically down really fast which is really good to do that because you can take in and then once you get into polygons you can kind of go from there and this was just to me easier than like taking a cylinder and trying to make a handle out of it you know like this was just would take forever I think maybe you could get it exact but I just enjoy just drawing one straight line and then doing it that way instead of trying to get my handle because then you got to get it from all four ways and it's just kind of pain in the butt so I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna make another video on like combining these objects together I think that's gonna be a little bit less information thrown at you for one tutorial so if you get to the teapot and you get it converted to over to polygons then you'll be ready for the next step okay bye